Hey everyone, what is going on? It is the Brad Fusion here, and welcome back to another episode of Reengineering. However, I don't really know if this counts as Reengineering, so I thought I would mention that at the start of the episode. Uh, in today's video, I will be showing you guys a few ships I have created, hence why I don't really feel it is Reengineering, because Reengineering uh, previously has been mainly focused on me building these odd creations that uh, no one's really ever seen before, uh, you know. Uh, it's really hard to explain. I don't really think that shipbuilding goes into my re-engineering series. So I just thought I would ask you guys, should shipbuilding be a separate series entirely? Because I do have a few ships I'd like to show off here and there. And I really do enjoy actually building ships as well, uh, whether they be small or large. And I just thought they don't really suit re-engineering, so I might make it a new series entirely. And if I do, what do you guys think I should name it? A lot of people keep saying Fusion Industries as... I guess that would be the name of the company I would create in the Space Engineers universe that would create ships, stations, and all that other sorts. Uh, now today's episode will feature a ship that does use mods, and the mod is actually part of the Azimuth Industries mod pack, or the master pack here. Now he did have them available individually, however I have downloaded them all as a master pack which he has up on the Steam Workshop and I will be providing you guys with a link for those of you who are curious to uh, download and play with this. I do highly suggest this mod pack as he does have some amazing uh, creations or amazing mods in here as well like whether it be the thrusters, uh, the weapons, the antennas or he even has a V8 engine, I haven't used these but they do look rather interesting and I might actually mess around with them a little bit later on. Anyways, it does have uh, reactors, uh, fusion reactors, batteries, uh, containers, thrusters, weapons, and antennas, yes, like I was saying before, and even a tiny drill for anyone who's interested in mining. Anyways, moving up from that, let me introduce to you guys the Dragonfly. Now, I'm calling it the Dragonfly for a very specific reason, which I will get to when I come up to the third variant of the ship. This variant here is the civilian variant, which is pretty standard in all its stats. It is a little bit slow, but not too slow, and it doesn't exactly have any weapons or too much armor. There's a few bits of armor here and there, and even the reactor on the end here is rather exposed to keep it lightweight. However, being a civilian vehicle, you wouldn't really expect it to be armed too much. That would be like having a normal family sedan covered in heavy uh, reinforcements and 9 inch glass. Even though I don't really think you can get 9 inches of glass on a vehicle, but good luck trying. Uh, yeah, no, this is very light armoured, very mobile for a small ship. It does obviously fit one person. I just thought it looked really, really nice. This is a interesting design for me as well, because normally when I make a ship, I have the cockpit towards the front. However, this one has the cockpit towards the back, and the thrusters, or the main two thrusters, which I'll show you guys right now, uh, these two blocks right here, they're actually towards the front of the ship, despite them pointing backwards. Now, this isn't exactly survival ready, at least I'm doubting it would be, simply because the thrusters, at least I think the top part of the thruster will hit the bar right here, though you can probably just easily remove that and it would be survival ready. Though, even though I don't know why you would really have this in survival, as it's more of a fancy ship to show off than it is anything else. This is like the Lamborghini of space, essentially. Uh, I'm just calling it that, it might not be here. People probably have so many more fancier ships, I just find this ship rather fancy for my style, as I normally don't make fancy ships, so this ship here does look fancy. It's, you know, it's got like an open grill on the front, it's got a really, really nice coat of red paint, white stripes. It just looks really, really cool. Even the reactor on the back just looks badass. So yeah, that is the civilian version of the Dragonfly. Now, I do have two other variants, and also the red color for anyone who is wondering. Let me bring out my color palette here and just give you guys the stats on this. So the hue is 2, saturation is 45, and the value is negative 11 for anyone who wants this red color. I have to admit, the red color does suit this so well. It's more like a blood red, but it's not so much a blood red. It's just that perfect tint, and I, I really do like it. So anyways, moving on to the second variant, which is the racer one. So if I come up to my platform up here, my little uh, watching platform that I've made specifically for these ships, and I might do this in the future for more ship showcases, where I have a little platform and the ships will be spinning on a little rotor here, just so I can demonstrate the ships whilst talking about it like I am doing right now. So this is the racing variant. As you can see, in terms of armor, it doesn't really differ too much from the standard ship. However, it has two large thrusters on either side, or sorry, one large thruster on either side. Uh, this puts its power usage up to around about 
almost overloading if you do a few maneuvers, however it does perform rather well for the most part. It does get up to speed uh, rather quickly, I think about 4 seconds or so it gets up to 100, as with the one over there it gets up at about 6 seconds, and the last ship I will show you guys, which is the militarized version, version gets up at about 7 or 8 seconds I think. But anyway, anyways, that is the racing variant, again rather fast for what it is, and I actually do enjoy flying this one around a lot more. It's a little bit more chunky, but at the same time, it's, I don't know, it's really, really cool. I would actually like to race people with this ship, because I, I, it just feels really cool. Uh, the reason why I made these ships, before I get on to the last one, which you guys saw for a split second then, I've been listening a lot to Wipeout music. Uh, I don't know why I've been listening to a lot of Wipeout music, but that just kind of fueled my mind with all these thoughts, and that's why the cockpit's towards the back of the ship. It's just that sort of aesthetic of Wipeout that I really do like, so I've decided to kind of copy that over to the game, and you can probably see a little bit of Wipeout in my initial ship sitting over there. But anyways, the main reason why this is called the Dragonfly, and that is because of the militarized version and how it looks. So this here is the Dragonfly militarized variant, which, the reason why I call it the Dragonfly is because the shields it has on either side kind of remind me of wings, and when you look at it from above, it just kind of looks like a Dragonfly to me. So anyways, the reactor on the back there is heavily armoured. It has eight shields, two Gatling cannons, and two missile launchers. Whilst it is a lot slower than the other units, it is a lot more protected, and it can dispense of units quite quickly. The weapons are quite centralised, meaning it's a little bit easier to aim and they're not too spread too far apart, meaning that you, you won't really have to worry about missing the targets. You can see the Gatling cannons right there, and the missile launchers are on the bottom, if you can kind of see those events, and I'll show you guys that a little bit more in a second. So now, I'm going to fly these around. By the way, let me know what you guys think about having these on these little rotors here spinning around. I just thought that would be a cool way to demonstrate how they look. Like, I built this whole platform. Uh, just so I could show off ships. Obviously, I won't be able to show off large ships on this, but any small ships I create, I think I can show them off like they're at some sort of display or expedition. Anyways, uh, I'm going to take these out for a fly. I do have an asteroid over there to fly in between to show off the, the speed that these guys can get up to, uh, as well as a few other things as well. Simply, well, may maybe I'll just crash them for the sake of crashing them. But anyway, let me take out the standard variant here, take it out for a fly. Oh yeah, also, I have this button here so I can uh, stop them from rotating whenever I want. Uh, it kind of snaps them in place, but it works nonetheless, and we'll just get them spinning uh, right now. Anyway, we'll also take out this one for a flight. Now, you may know I can actually get inside these ships uh, from the ground without having to use my jetpack, which is something I like about ship designs. I kind of hate having to use my jetpack to get inside some ships, uh, as with this one you can just get in just from standing beside it, which I think is really cool. So anyway, this is the view you get from the first person perspective inside the ship. Rather clean, rather nice, and it, it kind of makes me feel like I'm in a sports car, which is kind of really what I like uh, about the ship and how it's uh, laid out. I do love the cockpit by the way, the cockpit is just amazing to look at. But anyway, let me fly this out for you guys and I'll show you guys how this thing performs. So I'm going to have my HUD on for the first part of each of the ship's flight so you guys can see how long it takes to get up to 100 meters per second. So let's go straight forward and just see how fast or how long it takes for me to get to 100 meters a second. So there we are and we're up to 50. 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. There we are, so that was about 5 seconds or so. It's actually, I, I originally thought it was 15, so I was, a, I was a, a lot further off than I actually thought I would be. But this is the ship performing its uh, best. It actually looks really cool when it's flying as well. I, I just love this ship to pieces. Uh, so the first person view isn't exactly too bad either. You get to see the thrusters in action, and they don't exactly impair your vision too much. However, they are a little bit in the way, but I kind of really don't mind that because it gives me a sense of uh, how the ship performs. I, I don't know why. I would like to see the aspect of my ship through my cockpit. It just makes me, I don't know, enjoy flying it a little bit more. But uh, yeah, very, very uh, mobile. It, it's easy to control for the most part. I think the sideways thrusters aren't exactly too great, but they do what they need to do, which is why I was just showing you guys me going around the asteroid uh, in that sense. Now, this asteroid does have a hole in it, though I'm not entirely too sure where exactly that hole is. Uh, let me just see if I can quickly find that for you guys. I think it's on the top over there that I'm just missing. Probably on the bottom. No, I think it is actually on the top, because there is my base up there. So the hole must be just around about here. There's, there's the hole, I believe. At least that's one of the holes. Uh, let me just quickly fly through the asteroid and I will then uh, head back and show you guys the other variants. And that was me slowing down using the sideways thrusters, which you can see aren't exactly that great. But they still perform rather well 
and here we are inside. Now this doesn't have any lights either, however you're more than welcome to add them yourself. Uh, so let me fly back to base in third person so you guys can see that a little bit better. Like I said, this is kind of stylish. I, I really like the red I've used for it. It's a bit odd that I point out the colouring, but I just found the perfect red palette that I really, really do like. So let me park it back down here. I'll take off the racing variant in a second. So again, this is the racing variant, and I'll show you guys how fast that is in a second. So, three, two, one, go. And we're up to 50, and 80, and 100. There we are. In about two seconds less than the previous time, I feel, though I could be wrong. There we go, I've actually overloaded. Normally I've never actually gone into overload, but then again, I was full thrusting forward as I was trying to slow down. But again, this is a lot quicker than the previous version, which I kind of like, especially if you're using it for racing. It still has the same mobility, uh, though it is a little bit faster, so you will expect a little bit more of a lag or a drift if you're trying to turn around from full speed. Uh, again, I, I do like flying this. It's just so weird looking, but I, I love it. And I'll take this once more through the asteroid, and then I will uh, take off the military version. I'm not going to crash it in a second. I'm glad the thrusters are good at uh, propelling you away from stuff. And also, I love the trail of that thrust. It goes at quite a fair distance. It just looks so cool. But anyway, we'll take this one back, and then we'll take out the militarized version, and I can show you guys how that performs as well. So there's the landing pad over there, and we'll just land real quickly. Now the view is a little bit different, as you guys can see, you can see the shielding on the top, and I'll explain how the shielding works as well in a second for anyone who doesn't actually know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn on my gyroscopes in a second, like now, and then I'm going to do that and release. Now again, this is a lot slower than the other variants, but it looks a lot cooler because it's got shielding. So again, uh, let me show you guys the acceleration here, and then I'll fly around a bit and show you guys the weaponry. So, uh, there we go, it's now up to 30, 50, 70, 90, and then 100. So again, probably about 2 seconds slower than the standard, maybe 1 second slower than the standard. It's not exactly a bad speed, but it is, you can tell it's definitely a little bit slower. So this does have two weapons, like I said, the Gatling Cannon and the launcher, the rocket launcher, and this is the Gatling Cannon firing, as you can see from the front here. Let me actually zoom out where I can see it without my camera going all spacky, like it tends to do, and there you can see it firing from the front here. And let me just go back down here so you guys can see it a little bit better. And the actual launchers, which you may not have seen before, are actually underneath here, like so. You can see them just sticking out from the base, and they fire very much like you would think. They're a little bit closer together than the others are, but it still fires rather well. Actually, I think their alignment isn't... No, actually, they're a bit further apart than the Gatling Cannon is, but still very accurate because of how close they are to the center of your ship, and you don't really have to worry about aiming too much with it as it, uh, well, pretty much aims itself. So let me fly around to the inside of the asteroid, and let me bump it around a little, sh just so I can see how well these shielding plates actually work. Now there are two shield variants, there is the transparent one that I'm using, and then there is the actual armored or reinforced plating, which I will show you guys in a second as well for those who are curious. So this is me bumping up against it, and you can see that bumping up against it kind of resists quite a bit. Now I'm, I was genuinely surprised because of the way it works, and it works rather interestingly like. And actually, let me make a copy of it and just fire a few Gatling Cannons at it and see whether or not it can resist that too well. So let me make a quick copy here, paste it down, let me fire a few Gatling Rounds at the shield of the other one, just to see if I can penetrate the shield. So uh, let me go with the right weapon here and try shooting at it. And let me go third person here so I can get a better angle for you guys. Uh, let me go all the way back out here, just so I can see just slightly. There we go. So you can see that whilst it is uh, protecting some of it, it's not really protecting too much. Though, admittedly, you'd think some of the components would be destroyed by now. The only thing that has been destroyed is a little bit of armor here and there. But uh, maybe that is just how the shields work. I'm not entirely too sure, like I said. They do create a hitbox, which you guys can see here when I'm kind of running into it. Which is how it works. Even though you can still place blocks uh, reasonably quite close if you given the space. So you can still place blocks around inside of it. Uh, like, for example, if I was to put blocks there and there, and even outside of it. So it's, it still works like that. It's, it's not there, but it's there at the same time. It's really hard to explain. But that is the transparent uh, armor, and I'll show you guys the other one, which should be in my toolbar still, though I don't know if it is. 
think uh here we go here's the larger variant of it for the stations which I, th I think does look really really cool so we'll put it down here and then here so this is how they look when there's two of them side by side again really quite large you can put them on small ships as well i'll do that really quickly here for you guys uh no wrong thing that's definitely like the thrust is we don't want that we wanted the shield slanted, so let me put you in the right place. And you can see how putting them down, uh, you can really quite put them anywhere, which is uh, rather nice. So yeah, let me put it there, and I'll just put it uh, down here, like so. And there you go, you have now two little bits of shield plating on your ship, uh, which again, look quite cool, because they're kind of hovering there like that. It's really neat. I, I actually really like these. Uh, so yeah, that's the armored shield plating, and this is the azimuth mod, and this is my dragonfly uh, ship. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below, and again, I will be putting this up on the workshop. Also, let me know whether or not this should be a separate series to the re-engineering series, or whether it should still be part of it as it is creative building nonetheless. So again, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Stay awesome everyone, and thank you for watching.